Walk up in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. Walk in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. All right, y'all. Welcome back to The Rush. It is your boy, Max Crosby, in the building. I got my brothers with me, Brogan Roback, Darian Terrell. And here we are. Darian, you want to... That was a good crack. That was a great crack. Um, I'll let you, I'll let you mm. get it rolling. You know, yeah. Back. Yeah, we, were, uh, we got ourselves a good show today. I'm excited for it. Um, we're going to start off. We, we, we know we're, we're fresh off of the game. Um, it's you got the twenty four hour rule, so want to just hear from your perspective uh, how the game went. I know the defense was 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 playing some ball, um, but it's a three phase game. So just from your perspective, talk to us about the game and um, how we move forward from here. Yeah, I uh, don't want to be too long winded. Um, feel like I'm a broken record I'm repeating myself, but we just uh, haven't been able to finish football games, play good enough complimentary football and find ways to win. Uh, our record is our record. So um, it's disappointing and sickening, um, but all you can do is continue to show up and get better and improve. And that's all I'm focused on is being the best version of myself um, as a player, as a leader um, and bringing my brothers with me. And that's literally all I can do. So yeah, very winnable game. I mean, we had opportunities to strike and, and, and make it very, very interesting and take the lead at late in the game, and we just we couldn't do it. So, um, yeah, disappointing to say the least, especially at home again. Um, never want to lose in front of your fans, um, especially, what, three times now I think it is. Um, so, yeah, just uh, disappointing overall, but um, doesn't change my perspective. Like I said, I'm going to repeat it every single time. My goals haven't changed. My impact, my drive, my everything is never going to be impacted by the result of the game. I want to be the best at what I do, period. And I'm going to keep doing that every single day and continue to get better. So I'm looking forward to, you know, getting back in the building. I already, obviously already did that. I um, had an incredible day today. And uh, like Bill Belichick said, we're on to Sensi. So we're excited. Mm -hmm. Facts. I do have one question. This was something that was unique. I, I haven't, I've watched you play for ever. I saw it. Was it a two eye? I saw you pop in this week. A little bit of rush. Was there was a shade, a two eye? It's hard to see from that angle. Yeah, I was at a, a shade right there on the oh. center. Um, we ran a little stunt action. Um, moved me around a little bit, you know. Uh, yeah. Just trying to. Does it make you? Know, you keep, does it uh, make you happy? You play on the edge once you went inside. Just more freedom out there. Does it make you appreciate um, this the position more, or do you like? There's a lot more around? space. There's a lot more space out there. I definitely prefer, obviously, to be on the edge. But, um, I mean, especially, like, coming after the the Rams game, like, they just followed me with a tight end the whole entire game. Um, so yeah. we tried to, you know, do a couple little bit, you know, different things. And um, I'm comfortable with that as, as long as I get the reps and practice and get to work on it. So, yeah, you know, we, we, we were able to do some good things. And I felt like rush-wise, like, if we just – do it the right way. Like we, we rushed well. Um, we had a lot of guys getting after it, but it was, you know, there was a few instances where we didn't all do it at the same, we weren't all on the same page and that's where Mahomes could get loose a little bit. He didn't run for many yards at all, but he, he, um, you know, gave him a little bit more time to get outside the pocket and create downfield. And, um, that's what it's, you know, that's what we preach. That's what we talk about is being four equals one. Um, and we had opportunities. We just got to, I'll be on the same page and continue to get better. So, like you said, like we have, you know, there's no excuses at all. Um, you know, we have a lot of new guys and we're, we're all gelling together and working on, on being the best version of ourselves. So, um, yeah, so I, I like moving around. I don't mind moving around. I had some really good rushes on the right side, some really good rushes on the left. Mm -hmm. um, it's no different from a good receiver learning every position, you know, every wide receiver spot on the field, you know, like you can attack t defenses in different ways. I'm assuming it's very similar on the D line front. Yeah, I, I would say it's a little bit different. I would say it's a little bit harder just because like pass rush is very different. Like receivers, they can move around, get in motion. There's a lot more space. There's a lot more freedom. Um, but rush rushing is a lot different. Like you're fighting in a box and it's all about technique and footwork and pad level and comfortability and 
you know what I mean? If you play on the one side, like you see TJ play on the left damn near every single time. Like I play on the left a lot because um, mm-hmm. that's where I started playing the position and that's where I mastered it. It's like, you know, it's like asking a left tackle and now, okay, go play right tackle. It's completely different. Footwork, everything, you're, everything's different, your mechanics. So um, I've, I've gotten more and more reps on the right side um, and I don't mind it at all. Uh, you know, I, I'm getting more and more reps over there, but Obviously, I like being on the left side a lot more. That's just my natural, most comfortable position. That's what I work on the most. Um, but, you know, as I continue growing and getting better and improving um, and being the best complete player I could possibly be, if I can go over there and win on the right tackle, I can go do that. Like yesterday, I was about a half a yard away from getting the safety called by, you know, by killing the left tackle. And there's there's a few different incident, uh, incidences. What is that the right word? Instances. instances instances where mm-hmm. I uh, made some plays on the right side. So I think it's a little bit different in the run game. Like I don't mind being on the right in the, uh, in the run game at all. Yeah. Um, but pass rush is a little bit different. You know what I mean? Like it's more bending like, on a different angle is probably weird, right? As weird as that sounds. No doubt. Like your body bending no left as opposed to right. hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's totally different. So, and the footwork's totally different. So yeah, just repetition. For and sure. then even even bump it down, like having a, having a rusher bump down into the interior, like you'd think that the O line's at an advantage because, like you said, you're in a phone booth. But it's f-ing hell. Like they, it's a completely different. Like he's talking about the style of rushing. It's a completely different style of pass protection, right? Mm-hmm. If you have a big body, you can hold your hands longer. You guys can get you know into each other. No ditty there, but oh, um, yeah. But if, if you fire your punch and you have someone like Max, you clear your hands, he's got an easy sack. So it's uh, – I was, I was interested. I was pretty hyped when I saw that, that, that Max, rollout. Max, outside of oh, yeah. like the lack of space, what is the hardest part or, or what's the biggest difference, I should say, lining up inside in the interior as opposed to being on the outside? Opposed to like you know having all that room. Yeah, no, the, the space is one thing, but it's just like – Oh, line, like obviously interior guys, they're – they see a speed guy and they're immediately just going to jump set and try to grab you. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. they can't, their feet aren't the same as tackles. So mm-hmm. um, it, it's difficult, especially when you're like running games where it's like, all right, Max, you need to hit this a gap. You know what I mean? Like you have a one, I don't have a two way go or something like that. And they're just, they try to just jump set the shit out of me. Like that's like Humphrey. Like I had to be in the a gap. You know what I mean? I'm rushing the left a gap and, Yep. Humphrey um, had a pretty good jump on me yesterday um, on Tyree's sack, but Tyree got the clean one-on-one. They slid everything to our side. So, like, if they're sliding, typically they're sliding to me every single time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I know it's coming. So there's, like, zero room in there. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. the hardest part, and it just it happens right now. Instead, on yeah. the edge, it happens at the top of the rush, um, typically. So, yeah, just a little bit different, but – yeah, you know, the more reps I get, you know, I, the more and more comfortable. I feel like over the past couple of years, I've been doing more, um, just being more versatile and moving around a little bit more and giving the offensive coordinators a little, you know, I'm already giving them a lot of problems, but give them yeah. even more problems, you know what I mean? For sure. More shit to think about, more shit to prepare for. Um, can you speak to the your guys' pass rush, like, rules, so to speak, when playing a guy like Pat Mahomes? Like, what was your guys' emphasis this week, and was this – you lining up inside, did, was that like a game plan thing? Is there something you guys saw? Um, just kind of speak on that if you can. Um, no, I didn't really – I didn't line up in, inside a ton. You know what I mean? It was just a couple times just on certain games and things like that just to give a little little change up. But yep. um, Mahomes is probably the hardest dude to rush in the league, um, to be honest. You know what I mean? Like, And that's I'm saying that and nobody sacked him as many times as me. You know what I mean? But yep. he's, he's a tough dude to play because – He's he's gonna hold the ball longer than anybody, but he's also gonna be he's the best at feeling the rush, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, he's just he's crafty. He feels the rush, but also is looking downfield. It's more of a Thanks. feel. He's not just staring at the rush. He just feels you know people coming. You know what I mean? And pause. But yeah, he just has a good feel for it. So um, he's a hell of a player, um, and I love competing against him because. You know, we're both on that type of time every time we play each other. And he's, you know, he's a baller. So, yeah, yeah, he's tough. And you don't you don't know where the f- he's going to be. He's going to run through the B gaps. He's going to run out the back. He's going to do all different type of shit and try yeah. to make plays um, from every every angle possible. 
Yeah, I think you hit on it. He keeps his eyes down the field. A lot of guys, you, people will be like, what? Lamar is so hard to keep in the pocket or X, Y, and Z. But those guys are really run-first guys. Mahomes is literally looking for the big play when he breaks out of the pocket or expen- extending plays. So that's definitely probably the hardest thing. 100%. And, and his he's done it with Kelsey for so long. Like They've been able to switch different receivers in there. Um, yeah. But Kelsey's the one dude he's been with for so long, and they just have a connection. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Kelsey knows exactly where to sit. Mahomes knows exactly where he's going to be, and they just and they, they know really how to flop. Uh, well, that too, but that's another conversation. But yeah, you know he's you got to give credit to him. You know they they've you know been balling for a long, long time and got three Super Bowls behind it. So you know it's utmost respect at the end of the day. Yeah, and obviously we know D loves Cleveland, so I got to ask this. Um, you got into it with a fellow Cleveland guy out there. You're just letting him know you're here, kind of like what you and Mahomes were going at. There's always fireworks. There's always banter. Competition's at an all-time high when you guys line up. Um, obviously, you guys played really – I know there's things you guys want to you know clean up and do better, but I felt like you guys played the Chiefs way better than anybody else was anticipating. You listen to the media, which we all know have, and have our thoughts and opinions on that. But they, you, if you asked them before the game, they would have chalked it up by a blowout. So what is it about the Chiefs for you guys that just makes you guys kind of step up your level of play? And I know it's not at the level yet that you still want it to be, but can you just speak to that and the competition and everything that kind of arises in the game between you two? I don't know. I feel like, you know, we just know each other so well, especially your like division games, like, you know what time it is, you know what I mean? It's like there's no secrets. Um, you know, obviously Andy Reid's an incredible coach and he's going to change shit up um, more yeah. than most coaches. But, um, like, you're just familiar with how how it is. And at the end of the day, like, we both hate each other, um, for being completely honest. So, yeah. I mean, it brings the best out of each other. So, like, the Cream Hunt situation was the same thing. Like, you know what I mean? I'd smack the shit out of him on a backside run and – um and, and you let him know before that I got the holding and smack Mahomes and I was just on demon time. You know what I mean? And we're get we get a timeout and he's, you know, he's chirping a little bit and I just I don't give a fuck. I'm a chirp. You know what I mean? I'm gonna talk my shit back and it's in a timeout, so I, I had some time to talk my <laughs> shit and I didn't have. I that think time. you won. He daffed you up first, which means you automatically get the dub in that in my book. So we'll <laughs> no, chop you up. Me, for like, no, honestly, like I respected it. You know what I mean? Is at the end of the day, like. I don't give a fuck. somebody talks back or talks shit like I like that. You know what I mean? I think mm-hmm. if they just sit there and they're quiet, then he, I know I got them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But if they start bar- barking back a little bit, I'm like, all right. So like I didn't have my helmet on either. Like I walked right up to him and I told him like, all right, mother- keep talking. I was like, I love it. I was like, keep, uh, you know, I'm coming at you. know what I mean? I'm coming. Facts. I'm not, I'm coming all day. Like, yeah, I don't give a fuck what it is, what situation. And he was on the same shit. He's like, no, nah, mother- I'm coming too. like, I'm, like talking this shit back. I'm like, I bet. So, yeah. And it's cool that you can dap up and be cool in, in the midst of wanting to absolutely probably rip each other's face off too. Yeah. They, we both know our full intentions. Like he's yes. a bad mother. I respect Kareem Hunt. Like he's, he's a good player and I've been playing him since college. Like he was yeah. Toledo's running back. He played us, you know what I mean? So yeah, we um, remember. Yeah. He's a dog and, Great I, and balance. I respect it. You know what I mean? I'll, 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 show my respect you know what i mean it's like i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh he's trash like no nah, like he's a baller it's like me and Mahomes get into it all the time but i respect him i'm a yeah. dude, like he's a baller like it's the same type of shit like i know Mahomes is cold but like i told like i tell him every time like i'm that too like i told kareem hunt like i'm like that too like i'm yeah i'm that you know what i mean so mm-hmm. it's just it's respect but at the end of the day like it's it's competition it brings the best out of you so it's yeah. it, it was dope so. Yeah, good. Well, I'm eager to see uh, see the next matchup between these two teams. Um, cool. Let's let's get on to let's get on to our, our segment here with the teams. You know, I, <laughs> I had to do a little color coordinating. I'm not a fashionista, I'm one of those big trendy people. But you got the orange. We got that the happy dad, and then I got the you. <laughs> Because those boys are undefeated. They went and uh, they did what they were supposed to do against trash-ass Florida State because we all know how we feel about that team. Mm -hmm. Um, Undefeated. I think they're sixth in the nation now. Number six. Yeah, Yeah. they're they're cooking. Uh, How are they not higher? It's kind of I think that they were supposed to be four. It might be like a – 
I feel I was, like Ohio State's going to drop in the rankings, even though they won. I think they're going to drop a spot or two. I don't know. Yeah, it, I haven't it seen goes the, Oregon. Oh, I believe it's Oregon. It's Georgia. It's then Ohio State, I think. But yeah, I there's going to be a lot of mix ups in there. We're getting into, and I thought there was going to be a bigger mix up here, and we'll talk about that later. But we'll get to uh, Brogan's team. Are, are you are you still claiming them? Is that still no. your team? No, I, no? Took a, I took a firm stance on that. But Windiana, Windiana came in there with a backup quarterback, and they won. You're an Indiana guy now. No, no, Apparently, no. You can't. You can't. Be, you were just Army last week. I know. Well, I'm yeah, kidding. What but, happened with that? Number, hey, but listen. Nebraska, did I not say they will cover 25 and a half points on last week's episode? I said they will yeah, cover. They, that was disrespectful, I think. That Ohio, was way State, disrespectful. Ohio State never plays well against teams they're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yes. They always It's always weirdly close. It's their whole season. Plus, yeah. I think Matt Rule is a great coach. I actually do. At least you know in college football, he does a really good job motivating those guys. Um, so you knew they were going to come out there ready to go. But Rayola, he has too many – Turnovers, too many interceptions. I know uh, yeah. I was on the train in the first week. This isn't going to age well at all, but I was like, he could go after one year, put him in the league, and Max is like, slow down. Now I agree, <laughs> slow down. Um, he plays like Mahomes a lot. There are a lot of similarities, but he's too flat-footed in the pocket sometimes for my liking, and that's why I think sometimes the ball sail or he's not on time. First thing you have to do when you're flat-footed, majority of the time, is actually like reset the body to a certain extent to a throwing motion. So if he yeah. can turn he can take care of the ball a little bit, I think in the coming years they'll they'll be a tough team. But nah, right now it's not looking good for those boys. And I feel worse for Will Compton than I do for myself because he actually cares. Yeah. No, he He's cares a lot. I totally invested. He hates me right now. <laughs> You've been blowing him up. Oh my God. Past two weeks I've been killing him. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I gotta share this too because he's he's like Hold up, where's Will Compton text? You're gonna f- laugh, bro. I was dying. I, I, I wasn't gonna text him, but I'm like, f- him. I'm gonna f- with him right now. <laughs> so I know he yeah, was feeling too good. And good. this is when they got murdered by Indiana. And I just sent him the the Michael Scott. Oh wow. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he goes. You find out who your friends are at your lowest moments. <laughs> and then I sent him this this week. The the McConaughey this is my favorite one right now. Yes. Just punch in the fist. <laughs> That's soft. And he goes, we almost had him. Like they just didn't but know how yeah. to close the game out. They had, they, I was rooting for them more than anybody else. Maybe even more than Will. I was talking so much shit to every Ohio State fan in its group chats, talking about national champions with the SpongeBob memes, and then they just they just couldn't they couldn't close it out. But Ohio State will have its day. What will make my whole life, I'll call it now, is if Ohio Later. State loses to Michigan. It- <laughs> oh God, that'll oh. be the end. Oh, Ryan Day will be sent on the first. They're already back calling where for the his head. Well, like, listen, yeah. he doesn't win the big games. He's lost like every single big game, and he does. And I get it. What are you going to replace him with? Some other turd Ferguson? He's going to come in and lose <laughs> more games, probably. But no, they need Urban back. No, um, they don't like Urban. Bro, they all, they all, care they all, like him. They all, cr- they all cried and got him out of there. Who cares he's that he kicks kickers? Winner. I don't care if he kicked a kicker right in the ass. He's a f- winner. <laughs> or he's yeah. deep hooking. Urban, yeah, uh, bro. Urban mm-hmm. Meyer's the man. I will say that. I'm not. No offense to Ryan Day. I don't know him personally. But Urban Meyer, growing up, people, most people don't know this. I grew up a f- diehard Ohio State fan. It's not I the know. same anymore. I still, you know, still like him. But Urban Meyer's a f- legend. <laughs> He Urban is, Meyer got him a natty. Enough. Urban Meyer had him the best teams every single year. I don't care how psychotic he might be to the outside world, but he it wins works. Yeah. Here we I go. Mean, a question works. for you. Trestle or Urban Meyer? Urban, 100%. Oh, oh. Didn't 100%. even has he. Didn't even not hit even, a has Not even a question. I, I, like, I feel with Urban Heavy. Yeah. Jim Trestle is a great coach, but Jim Trestle never won a big game. And Urban did let's it somewhere be, else other than Ohio State also. That's exactly why them. Trestle – I mean, in my opinion, that's why Trestle left. They're like, we need somebody to come in and, okay, we need to take the next step. Because yeah. they're always in big games. They, all, You know, we still beat Michigan. You know, they're trash. But 
We. You heard we, him say we, by the way? Yeah, that's no, how I'm, they all are. That's how I, I know was, he's an I, actual fan. Trust me. I am. I was, <laughs> as a kid, I was, bro, I was diehard. It's not the same now because Eastern is just, I don't care. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. the same. But, yeah. like, Jim Trestle, he, he was a good coach, but he could never – he was very iffy in the BCS games and shit like that back in the day. Urban came in and really changed that shit, turned it up. Yeah, it, that's no. that's always my argument is if you get rid of Ryan Day, who's your Urban Meyer? There's It's not like there's some – Guy out there who's a front runner to come in and, and Urban Meyer take the ain't program. dead. No, he ain't. You think they're gonna let Urban Meyer come back? Maybe they should have him on the field. They should elevate Chip Kelly. They should. Just elevate Chip Kelly and just see what no, he does. Oh, they saw God, what he did no. out there on the West Coast. No, no, <laughs> dude, no one can win no. at UCLA. They're all yeah, in the clubs. No. They are in the clubs every night. Yeah, it works for that. USC. Remember when Josh Rosen played there and he was in, he had a hot tub in his dorm. And he was that chilling after a game. Yeah, Good that's what him. they What's do the out there. What's the well, we're rubbing two nickels together at Eastern. What's the spot in L.A. we went to? That's, that's oh, where they're uh, at in the late nights. Well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, no, the no, that Delilah was for dinner. Delilah. It was the like the social club place. Yeah, I don't yeah, even remember. Was, yeah, Illuminati meeting. That's it really was. It, by the way, Darian, congratulations. <laughs> you, killed the, you killed the deer. Yeah, we're proud of you. We're super proud. We, <laughs> could you tell by our text? Deering said the deer and no one answered. <laughs> You're wearing camo, you f- fraud. Look okay. at you. Deering, don't get upset. I just I don't stand up for murdering animals. All right? I know they're nice. fucking tasty and they're you good. And I, just, I, know, I know. I just said that, but I wouldn't kill one. I don't opinion. think Max has ever had venison in his life. Yes. I, no. Man. Oh, he, yes, I, I cook it. He said, I cook it. I don't cook it, but I've had it. <laughs> Max can't put in his like deer. Deer. People kill deer for a living. What do you mean? 15 minutes down the road, baby. I'll still hold it tight to my heart for exactly. you. Exactly. I'm just about. saying. I'm just out. saying. Everybody everybody thinks it's this terrible thing until I got a freezer full of that shit. And they're like, oh, let me get a pack. 12. One thing that I do want from you, D, again, Listen. that you absolutely ha- you hit home was the venison biscuits and gravy in the morning. Bro, oh, my, bro that what? sounds it's, so good. It's full sausage. Oh, it goes dumb. That's full but pork, yes, right? thank you. We got another buck. Not as big as last year's. That one was a f-ing unit. It was, it We're was working on you taking bike. compliments still, as everyone can tell. It takes it's, a little bit. Yeah. A little it's banter here. first, then he'll accept it. It's here. Yeah. Well, because it's always a backhanded compliment to start. <laughs> it's not backhanded. I just... Me personally, <laughs> I don't see myself murdering an animal. I just can't. I'm an animal person, so... Brogan, what was one of the best things that we did last offseason? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of it, D, but my personal favorite probably was hitting the Lakers game courtside. Courtside tickets. Speaking of which, when you hop into game time, you're able to go in and do the game time picks, and you know who's playing in Cleveland on Wednesday this week. The King, he's returning, and we will all be witnesses, just like we will all be witnesses of the Game Time app, Darian. That's my personal favorite. They got all-in pricing, Game Time picks, so they can show us the best deals, best seats. And I'm telling you right now, I'm eyeing up some of these seats in the 100 level for Wednesday, and they're looking pretty promising. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, you might even see your favorite celebrity there. We saw quite a few at LA. I know Cleveland might be a little different, but there's very a star-studded state. We are biased, of course, but the best part is, D, Game Time Picks filters out all the fluff just to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching throughout thousands and thousands of tickets. Now, all you have to do to join in on the fun... Wednesday in Cleveland to watch the Cavs and the Lakers square off is go to the app store, download the game time app, create an account, and then use code the rush. Again, use code the rush T H E R U S H to get yourself a $20 off your first time purchase. I'm already purchasing right now. D what time is it? It's game time. Game time. Hey, let's move on though. BYU, you called it. BYU, thirty-seven no, twenty-four. This is really we gotta hear team, about, we gotta hear about really his hard. actual team first, which would be Texas. I'm kind of over They're, them right oh, now. Oh, I'm all in on the dude. <laughs> Look at the trend that has been started now. Yes, man. Hey, I'm still rooting for my Longhorns. I like what we're doing. We need Arch Manning. Just gonna say that. Put it Bring back dead beat dads. We put we Arch, don't care about those teams. Put in Arch Manning. Exactly. 100. percent We move on. Where the grass is greener. Um, we need. I'm all in on the BYU Cougars. I've been saying it since 
August. So, D- Darren, you can back me on this. Uh, you have. You have. Thank you. I'm a BY yeah, Cougar have. to the day I die. BY Cougar. I'm a yeah. Coug. I'm a and Coug. They, were, they, they disrespected them and, and they were underdogs. They Bro, came in and I'm got some wax in a 37 to 24. Bro, they've been disrespected all year and they're 8 0 now. They're a yeah. problem. What Und- is the undefeated. Record? What, what is, undefeated. I know they're undefeated, but what I are think they? They're like, what are they I rank? Nine. Excuse look. me? They're ranked nine and they're going on the bye week. I love yeah. that. All I know is, you know who I'm residing with the people that protect and serve this country. Army. 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 <laughs> that's hey. that's your team. I have and the ones who talk the most shit. BYU Cougars all the way. Yeah. Also, you guys know I'm a Colorado stan, low key. I'm not gonna lie. High key. And high key. High key. And I'm all in. Six and two, ranked twenty three now. Yeah. They might make a push for the playoffs. First bowl game in two thousand six, two thousand sixteen. And oh, they good. they they got a chance to play for the championship out there out west. So they're they're pacing pretty well for themselves. They really are. Who would have at thought? this rate? At this rate, they'll have Drake and Lil Wayne at the next game or at the championship. Hundred percent. They need Boozy to perform in the locker room. It's time. They they got a bye week this week, oh. and I th- believe that they're going and playing at Texas Texas Tech is their next matchup. I don't think they got a bye. What do they have? Two bye weeks. They just had a bye week. Yeah, they they're on a bye this week. Again, sure. they just had a bye week. Arian, are your facts Arian? right now? Well, you guys proved me wrong. No, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I know for a fact they just had a bye week. Yeah, they're off. Hmm. Really? Sorry, I'm trying to scroll over on here doing this. Yeah, look at um, this. They had a bye week after UCF, and now they have another bye week? What the? Mm-hmm. F- oh, they're just giving away wins. Maybe and they just they- didn't schedule. Maybe it's an option to schedule those out of conference games. You can you can do it or not. I'm not sure. Yeah, so I kind of like it though. So hey, bro, they have a favorable schedule to go. My God, bro, yep. they play Texas Tech, which is a winnable game. It's not going to be yep. easy playing in Lubbock. Then they play yep. Utah, who has no quarterback. None. Um. Then they play Kansas, who's two and six. Then Struggle. they play Oklahoma State, who's three and five. Bro, they can win out. And yeah. people were sleeping. I remember before the season, I go, they're going to go at least eight and four. People were like, you're f-ing high. I'm like, <laughs> keep sleeping. I hope they win out so badly, and I hope they win. That would be an electric factory for the for the, for the the old Buffaloes. College football yeah. needs it. Yeah, I mean, seeing those night games there is sick. They sell that place out. The place is a great environment. And those boys go out there and show out. So where's Travis Hunter set for this whole Heisman? I mean, he Bro. went dumb last last week too. Yeah, he keeps going dumb. I mean, yeah. who? It's either going to be him or uh, I mean, it's going to be hard to beat the Boise State dude. It should be Cam Ward, Genty, and Travis Hunter for my oh, top yeah, three. Oh yeah, Cam Ward. I would put Cam Ward. Cam Ward. So he caught a touchdown, by the way, too. You didn't mention that, D, but he caught a touchdown on top of all the work he did. On top of that, he didn't throw any. He he, he threw for like two twenty. Yeah, he's a beast, though. I like it. I love his arm slots, dude. The way he throws the ball. Sometimes he does it maybe a little too much, but I'm a fan. It's working for him. It is. That boy cook. And he just signed a deal with Adidas. Cam Ward. Yeah. Yeah, Hmm. they are in Adidas school, so it makes makes sense. Yeah, he's he's balling, bro. Well, it it was a it was a hell of a weekend for for college football. We got it. We got a decent one. You know, you guys know I talked about the Penn State, uh, Wisconsin. I thought that it was. I thought Wisconsin was going to dethrone the Nittany Lions. It didn't happen. No. They were coming off a bye week. Thought that they were going to be doing a look ahead to Ohio State, but now if we're looking ahead here, they are hosting Ohio State in in Penn State this this week for uh, yeah. a big Big Ten matchup. That's because they Three put in Trace four. McSorley two point Literally, Big. that kid wears the same number and plays exactly like Trace McSorley. They're back. And, he, and he's all. Yeah. He balled. He, was, he, revamped, he revamped that offense. I'd almost say they're harder. They're a harder team to game plan for a guy like that. He literally will take off 10 steps back there in the in the pocket, and he'll just tuck it in beeline and still get, <laughs> you know, six, seven, eight yards. Like, he, he's a pretty good player. I like to see it. Yeah. That or you got Christian Hackenberg 2.0. I mean, you take your pick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Enough said from Max. No comment. Brutal. All right, let's move on to uh let's move on to the NFL. There was there was a lot of games on yesterday. A lot of things happened. 
But first and foremost, what have I been saying since preseason? Someone Jim. just tell me. Give I'm just saying it. Don't take my – Dude, don't do that, Darian. Oh, I know you're we're all in on James. How are you going to take that for me? I said it in Jameis we trust. 35 touchdowns, 35 picks, but at least it gives us a chance to win a game. That's all I, that's all I needed from him. And then you got Dorsey calling the plays. Stefanski relinquished the play calling, and look what happens. The Cleveland Browns come out. They get a W at home against the Ravens. I mean, Jameis threw for 334 and three touchdowns. <laughs> no figs. No, no, there were three that were very close, very close, very, very close. They said, what ha- what happened? Uh, what was your thought process when you let that go? He goes, I prayed. I, ins- I, I prayed instantly. He was, dude, he was on one post, no. post-game conferences. He's Pastor my favorite Jameis. player in the NFL. I'm he, just going to throw that out there. Hands down. His, him talking about do it for the there. team that's on your helmet, and he's like, we ain't got no decals. <laughs> yeah, never mind, we ain't got no decals. <laughs> He's coming in the tunnel. He goes, I ain't going to do it, but you guys do it for me. He's holding up the W's. I'm like, Bro. we needed that. We needed yeah. it. And, and so that, that was a great that was a great win for the Cleveland Browns. Next, we got the Lions got to just smack in the Titans. Titans 50, 52 to 14. Yeah, yeah. that was big. They, I mean, Arden golf. Arden Key, big day. Wow. Golf he team went over 100 talking. yards, which is insane, and still threw three touchdowns. Um, there's a lack Tennessee of Tennessee just turned the ball over like crazy, or what happened? Honestly, I just think they just didn't get much going. Obviously, Calvin Ridley, he had a good day for them. Um, he finally saw the ball. With Mason Rudolph, he has more yards and more receptions with Mason than he has all year with Will Levis. I believe it. Just by yeah, the two Ma- games that he's played. Mason, kind of. Mason Rudolph, I mean, he's been in the league for a long time. I mean, he's a vet. He's I, I, and really, he's cold, bro. He just needs the he's cold. He's cold. Yeah, he just needs the ball in his hand. Yeah, there's yeah. something to be said about having a guy back there that has just been around the game and can understand to get the ball out, get to the right guys. Will yeah. Levis, that's his. I think that's his biggest downfall. His kryptonite is he thinks he has to do everything in order for them to get a dub, but really, it's in hindsight, it's it's hurting him. It really is. Yeah, I mean, that's always a struggle for young quarterbacks, though. It I mean, is. that's the hardest thing. I mean, especially the everything that comes with being a quarterback, it's obviously, you know this more than anything, Rogan, but it's it's not easy. And Mm-mm. I feel like, especially young guys, they're so hit or miss. You know what I mean? It's either they come in, they look comfortable, and they do their thing, or some guys come in and they press and they try too hard to make plays, and they can also, you know, go into a spiral real fast. And yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's because so many people I feel like are so afraid of being labeled as a game manager because there's such a negative view around being a a game manager. But so many great quarterbacks have built great careers off being game managers, but you still have to make plays as a game manager. It's okay. It's a good title. People should be more more than happy to take that instead of trying to be the guy. You can go be Josh Allen and not go to a Super Bowl and do everything for your team. And that doesn't really do anything. Not saying that Josh isn't a great player. I'm just saying, like, he does everything or has done everything for years. Now he's starting to dish the rock out and distribute the ball to more guys without Stefan Diggs being there. And I think they're a better team from it. Yeah. No, it makes sense. It's funny. Yeah. That for some reason, game manager is like a bad thing. But Tom Brady is literally the greatest of all time and he was a game manager. So same with Peyton Manning, right? Same with Peyton's Peyton. not wowing you any other way. No, Tom Brady, and even look at. Right How there. Mahomes plays now. Mahomes is not taking all these shots downfield every play. He doesn't have Tyreek Hill. You know what I mean? It's a little different. He's yeah. checking the ball down, taking what the defense gives you. And I mean, that's there's that's more check downs is. nowadays, I feel like, than there ever has been. Do you just no, feel like more sure. teams are playing two deep safeties? That here we go on that topic of conversation, but they're just keeping everything in front of them, I feel like, nowadays. Have you seen that? No doubt. I mean, Players get better, coaches get better. It's just at the end of the day, it's it gets harder and harder, especially if you're in a two shell. Like it, it's hard to just take shots downfield. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. But if you're playing man to man coverage, okay, it's different. You can just sling the ball downfield all day, but it's not. I mean, teams are trying to limit shots, and mm-hmm. you know, if you want to check the ball down all day, you're going to have to take a lot of punishment as well and take hits and hits and hits. And you know, as a, as a defense, you're like, okay, we're going to bend, but don't break. If they want to take the checkdowns all day then yeah. it is what it is. But most teams aren't going to just 
and quarterbacks aren't just going to take the check down all day. They're going to eventually take shots, and that's where you make your play. So, yep. yeah, it's, uh, you know, league is – I mean, it just goes in ebbs and flows, the league. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. Then in a couple of years, there'll be dudes slinging the ball downfield all day. So you, you never know. Yeah, they'll figure a way to, around that at some point. Talk 100%. about slinging the ball downfield. Commanders, oh my God. last oh second, my. Hail Mary, beating the Bears. I mean – have you ever – have you seen it? Have you been a part of a game like that where it's a, where it ended on a last-second Hail Mary? I've never lost in a Hail Mary ever. And I – It was insane. Bro, I what? lost my lunch. <laughs> I won my lunch. Listen, it, Max, what about 29 for the Bears? Did you see it? Of course I saw it. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's what everyone's been talking about. It's like – I can't speak or say I know what happened in that situation, but how the f- how he didn't know until they were down play? on the twenty yard line, bro. Well, the play was already halfway going, and he literally has no idea. I don't know what was going on, but that's probably the craziest shit I've ever seen in the league. And they then said he the Bears ended up fans are like, in and tipping it up. It, bro, it tips it up for a touchdown. I can't. That's like. The They're worst the nightmare for yeah. It's yes, like, it was. They're crazy. on the list. I'm done but with Bel- that. Belichick you broke cannot. it down today, like how you should play that play and all this stuff. It was interesting the amount of like thought process and prep that truly both sides of the ball have to make on that. Max, you guys probably do it every Friday. You probably do like a hail mary type thing or walk through it. I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, Most teams no, do. we do situational shit all the time, and it's like. I mean, there's there's a lot of elements to it. There's a box out guy. Not everyone's yeah. jumping. And there's a lot of elements to it, and people don't even realize that. But if somebody f***ed up and you got two people jumping, the ball tips up. You're, f- you know yeah. what I mean? You got to count for the people on the ground. You know what I mean? And take yeah. That's what play. that's what the, her, their coach. Like yeah, that's what their coach even said. He literally went into detail because they were trying to come after him. Like, did you guys practice? He said we practice it all the time. We have a box out guy. You have a guy that sits there to bat it down. You have a guy in the back that covers if the ball is tipped behind and he goes yeah, into detail, right. he's like, we, we do practice this. So, oh, I mean, yeah. that was, that was just a crazy ending. Good for the commanders, yeah. but it is. Bears. Crazy, Last thing bro. I want to bring up from this weekend for football wise is I got to get your opinion because you play every snap. You pride yourself on it. You actually last year, remember when he heard his knee D and he wanted, they wanted to take him out to give him a rest and Wouldn't do it. basically had to take it force a time out pretty much because Max wasn't coming off the field, which is why we love you along many other reasons. But Anthony Richardson tapping himself out on a crucial third down as a quarterback, because he ran 10 yards, by the way, he said he was exhausted. He ran like 10 yards just so we get that clear. What's your thoughts on that? And is that a tough look for a quarterback? Can you ever come back from that? And is it Joe Flacco time? Yes. I mean, there's no comment. I mean, they are everybody. The response he's gotten is, I mean, I think he knows it. I think everybody else knows it. Like, you're the quarterback. I've never seen a quarterback check himself out of a game ever. Ever. You know what I mean? Ever. Especially in that situation. Like, I don't care how tired you are. You know my opinion. Like, yes, my heart's got to literally stop for me to come off the field. So, yes. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I have no com. I I haven't. I didn't see exactly all the details, and I don't know everything about it. But I mean, in that situation, that's insane to me. And just doubles down in the yeah. press conference. Yeah, and double you're a leader. Down. Like you're supposed Why? to be down. That's what leader. I'm saying. The like, franchise. just like, you guys look up to. You can't be doing. Just shit like don't that. don't say anything in the press conference. But he was like joking around. He was like, "Shit, I was tired." Like he should have lied. Oh. Wrong answer. The wrong answer. That's wrong I think he answer. Knows that now. Like, he does now. It's a young mistake, but like, yeah, he, he fucked up. He is uh, very young. Good. He hasn't played a lot of football, truthfully, in his whole time at Florida. Even in the league now, he's ha- he's been banged up. I truthfully think, I know after I just went in pretty hard there. I think he kind of hurt his leg, and he didn't want it to look like he was actually hurt. And he's been so I don't want to use the word injury prone, but he's been. He's been down a lot this year, even last year, and I think maybe that was his way of getting off. But to your point, to both your guys' point, just get in the podium and then lie then, please. For one time, just lie. <laughs> yeah. Or you just know? do – give me a press conference answer. I mean, just stay on the field. He knows he should have been on the field. If he could, if he was actually injured, 
that's a whole different conversation to say, yeah, I, I tweak my leg a little bit and I'm whatever, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like the more the if you lie, then you're gonna try you're gonna fuck up and slip up eventually along the road. So for sure, just be straight up about it. And look at he's got to learn man. from it. He's a young player. Yeah, he's a young player. He'll so. bounce back. He'll bounce He'll be back. good. He just got to – I mean, he can't do shit like that. He they're evaluating that. that position, though, now, according, according to their head coach. They're evaluating what they're going to do head, heading well, in this week. So, Because I mean, Joe Flacco's Joe Flacco. Well, he was 2 of 15 in the first half, bro. Yeah, but that's, that's tough. And Joe Flacco. Joe, Joe Flacco. Uh, <laughs> last thing, we, we, we got to give a shout-out where a shout-out is due, even though this one hurt as well, the Cardinals and the, the Dolphins. Uh, Chad Ryland with a walk-off field goal. The with, hammer. What is the that, hammer. his third this season? Yeah, I think it's the third this year. Third? just And 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 you love to see people go and succeed. He he was with the Patriots, not there anymore, goes to the Cardinals and is finding success. So we like to see a former Eagle doing well, even if it costs a couple dollars. And even if they try to say he's a Maryland Terp all the time, you spend one year there, you're an Eagle. I don't want to hear Eagle. that anymore. He, his name's up on the ring. He know he was there. He knows. Speaking of other guys who have hammers, UFC 308. Did you watch Chimaev and Whitaker? Uh, yeah, he broke his face. I couldn't believe. Broke his teeth. He shattered his teeth. I, that dude is different, bro. I'm scared of him. Are you a fan he's, of him shooting killer, immediately? Bro. He's a killer. Like, no, do you care? I hate it. I hate it. I you know, know where I stand when it comes to that. I know. I know. It's I wanted literally. to ask you. I okay. like brawlers. Literally I like brawlers. Stand. Okay, but, what about uh, Holloway and Ilya? I know you love Ilya, but Holloway's my think guy Max, too. I, I know, but Max. one one after the going into the third, I thought Max had a chance. I mean, he fought well. I mean, the second half of the second round, I was a little, I was like, oh, yeah. He started connecting, connecting, connecting. I'm like, uh, and Ilya is, bro. He's so dangerous, and he has heavy hands for that division. It's crazy. Yeah, he Don't puts people's the lights out. The only other person I can compare to in that division with heavy hands is Connor. Yeah, 100%. Connor would see people with hand with like like that exactly the same way. And the problem is, he gets you on the cage as soon as he gets your back up against the cage. That's when he's going to knock you out. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, he just he just slowly walks you down, walks you down, walks, and he just catches you, bro. His hands are clean, crisp, and he puts people's lights out. I see the he, bro. I don't see anybody beating him for a minute. I was going to say, is he the best boxer in the UFC? Because there was a battle between him and Max, who they thought was the best boxer. And if so, yeah. who's your top three boxers in the UFC? Just pure boxing? Yeah, just like strictly hands. Hmm. I mean... Wanderlei Silva? Yeah. I would be, <laughs> Ilya has to be top three. Yes. I mean, Connor. You can't say Connor is he just doesn't fight anymore. So until he's back in the picture, then we can discuss him. But I mean, even though Alex Pereira is like a kickboxer, he does box all the time. And I feel like his hands alone are the yeah. most dangerous two set of pair of hands I've ever seen in an octagon. So I, I, I would go with him for sure. Do you think Strickland's a good boxer? I was going to say Strickland's got to be the other one. He's got to be the other one. He's, he can roll. Nobody fights like him. Literally, nobody fights like him. He fights like the he has that old school Philly shell and stands yeah. there and somehow has the highest miss rate and best defense in the UFC. And he stands there the whole, whole time, square and right in front of you, and just literally parries and jab, 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 all fight. And yeah, yeah, I would say he's up there. I would say he's top. He's definitely up in the, at least the top five. Yeah. I agree. I yeah. just wanted to get your opinion because it's definitely a battle, and you're a big boxer. You do it all year long. So, <clears throat> yeah, for it's, sure. Yeah, Dana White strikes again. Though. That was a great card. All right, yeah, we're on no, to the on to the next. We get to get into our segment of our oh, dog of the day. Oh, 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 oh. All right, talk to us, Wap. Who we got? Um, shit, dog of the day. I mean, there was a lot of people we looked at. There was, I mean, defensively, a lot of dudes flying around making plays. Um, but the dude that stuck out to me, he didn't necessarily have the craziest stat game, but big moments, flying around, talking his shit and locking shit down was Nate Hobbs. Nate mm -hmm. Hobbs, we already know he's a dog. Uh, oh, my, guy. my brother. Love that guy. I know you guys spent some time with him. He's 
one of the better people out there um, in the league. But he's just he's an absolute dog and he's going to put it all on the line. He doesn't shy away from competition. And um, he was consistently making big plays, especially that third and, you know, third and goal. He comes in and makes a huge play to break up the pass and holds him to three. Um, that was that was a huge point in the game. So, yeah, our, our our dog of the day, it definitely goes to our boy, Nate Hobbs. So big shout out to you, Nate. Oh, yeah. Oh, Nate, congrats, my man. <laughs> Next segment we're going to get into here is the Big Sax segment, sponsored by our friends over oh, yeah. at Sax. Show me your so big sack. So we had uh, Tyree Wilson had is is our Big Sack of the day. Max, go ahead and talk us through that play and uh, and, and what happened, what went down. Hell yeah! So uh, big shout out to Tyree first sack of the year. So I know he was definitely fiending for a sack. Um, we talked about it this week. He's like, I need to get a sack, bro. And I literally just told him, I'm like, bro, it's coming. Just keep playing the game the right way, and it's it's going to come. Um, and ironically, he ends up getting a sack this week. So he, uh, he's he been playing his ass off. He's been getting better and better, and the effort he's playing with and the technique has been getting fine-tuned, and he's starting to he's starting to come along. And uh, yeah. he's got a lot of work to do, but he knows he's going in the right direction and his mind is in the right place. So um, in this, you know, in this instance, we had a game. We loaded up on the left side. Um, we had a game over on the left side, and then it left Tyree with a one-on-one on the tackle, uh, 64. So um, he had a nice-ass move. Um, you know, we called it an one because he, he forced the penalty on the left tackle with the hands of face and still got the sack. Oh, yeah. um, but he just got to the edge. He beat him off the ball, got to the edge, ripped, and and finished on, you know, Mahomes. So um, big moment in the game. It was on a third down. Um, yeah, slight pause. Um, but, yeah, it was a big moment in the game um, and got us off the field on a third down. So – Big shout out to my boy Tyree. Keep balling, keep doing your thing, and he's only going to get better. So big shout out to Tyree with the big Let's go. sack. Big sack. Your mom's favorite play. Yeah. Big sack sponsored by Sacks sack. Underwear, the yes. best in the game. It takes balls to sack a quarterback. It takes Sacks Underwear to support your balls. I've teamed up with Sacks as their newest ambassador to bring you game changing underwear. Sacks Underwear is versatile and comfortable. I wear it to train, hang out, and even sleep. They've got a pair for everything, and it allows me to be limitless every day. Use my code, the Rush24, for 15% off at Sacks.com. Sacks Underwear with the ballpark pouch changes the game. Period. All right. We, uh, we're going to do our look ahead on the road in Cincinnati. Talk to us about what, how you're feeling uh, traveling to the great state of Ohio great state. Uh, and playing in that Midwestern weather. It's getting a little, a little bit chillier. It's not a dome. We're not in the desert. starving for a dub, too. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a battle out there. 100%. No, it's, it's going to be a damn war, and I'm, I'm excited for it. Um, Cincy, got a ton of respect for him. Um, got a great coach, great quarterback, and a lot of really good players. Um, so... Um, I know on both sides of the ball, you know, both sides of the ball, they've been, you know, pretty damn good for a long time. And they've been one of those teams like like Buffalo that's right up there with Kansas City competing for, you know, AFC championships every year. So um, regardless of the record, we know what the challenge is. Um, obviously, this week going to be watching a ton of film um, and be, you know, doing what I do on a daily basis, perfecting my craft and continuing to get better. And as a team, um, just continue to improve. Um and whatever we got to do, you know what I mean? We're, we're going in the right direction. Uh, we just got to capitalize and finish. And uh, it's a huge, huge game coming up. We need to win desperately. Um, but we got to go out there and play our game. And uh, we feel like we can beat anybody. So um, we're excited. We got this one. And then we got the bye week after that. So we need to go into the bye week, you know, with the right um, momentum, the right energy, the right momentum, um, and go to Cincy and go get a big win. So we're looking forward oh, yeah. to it. Max, is the last time you guys played in the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, that was Let's my go. last time there. My last and only time that I've been there. Yeah. No, we were there before, right? When you got a four piece, your was it your second year? Yeah, that well, that was against Cincy, but that was at uh that was in Oakland. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, that was in Oakland. That was in the Coliseum. The throwback. So a lot of good memories there. Okay. A ton of good memories there. I love it. Coliseum. Shout out to I'm Oakland. A, I might drive down. I don't give a oh, what do you mean might? You better. All right. All right. I'm, calling, I'm, I'm calling you out. I right. you, right. you better be there, boy. Say less. I got you. you know what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jensen, <laughs> <all those> <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Last and final segment of the day. We got our Rushman of the Week. Talk to us. Let me take a peek first because <laughs> got to make sure and, I'm on and, point. And while, while we're doing this, I know we don't want to give away when we're recording, but Dexter Lawrence is having an unbelievable first half. What, did I he mean, have another sack? He was close. He fell Ooh. off it, but he's literally putting offensive linemen on their back. Oh, multiple, multiple times hey, so far. Like Zach Randolph said, he said, where I'm from, we bully bullies. That's Dexter facts. Lawrence. So where I'm no, from, he, bullies get bullied. He mm-hmm. really is. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Brian Burns has a sack. Okay. Yeah, As he's, he's – Ojalari has a sack. I mean, okay. Baldy's going to be doing a breakdown of this this first half performance. No doubt. Yeah, Dexter Lawrence is a f-ing problem. I'll just, I'll just say that again for the 10th time. But <laughs> he's a f-ing problem. So you guys already know this. This is my favorite segment, without a doubt. It's hard to say. We've got a lot of great ones. But – it's our rushman of the week. Coming in at number three, first timer, Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Coastal Carolina's finest. Three tackles, two sacks, CJ Brewer. His name is flown under the radar a little bit, um, but he comes in and gets a two piece in a big game versus the Falcons against some, actually, some really good guards. So um, him stepping up, making making some uh, some big plays. And, and, you know, the Buccaneers, I'll just say this. Their front is very underrated. They got Vita Vea. They got uh, Buddy from Iowa, Anthony Nelson. They got some dudes, a lot of young guys, but a, a lot of uh, a lot of talent and potential. Um, what's the other dude's name? I'm forgetting. Went to the, um, no, Jose he's, Ramirez. He's, Jose Dude Ramirez, Eastern. Eastern. Um, no, Kalijah Cansey, oh. baller. He was at the SAC yeah. Summit. Y'all are there. You know. Yes. Come on, guys. Real one. Anyway, but CJ Brewer coming in with a two piece. Big shout out to you, CJ. Great game. Keep doing your thing. Keep balling, brother. You're number three hey, on our Rushman of the Week. Thanks, Josh. Wait, Thanks for John. That a boy. Coming in at number two, the OG, Big Body Benz. Beast. This dude is a run stuffer, but comes in with five tackles, two sacks. The OG, Ashawn Robinson. Dude is still getting it done. I believe it's year 11, maybe 10 or 11. He's been doing it at a high level for a long time. And I got a lot of respect for this dude. He's been playing very good football for a long time. And uh, to see him doing it um, still is, is super impressive. And um, he's just sound. He plays the run really well, plays the pass well. He's an enormous individual. Um, and I've, I've been able to, you know, have a couple conversations with him. And the dude is all about ball and um, seeing him doing his thing um, in this part of his career is real dope. So, Number two on our rushman of the week, Ashawn Robinson. Big shout out to you, brother. That a boy. Numero you know, uno. And you know we got to save the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is my guy. This is this is my brother. You know we came in the league together. Dude is one great of, dancer. Great dancer. Unmatched yeah, loves, energy. Unmatched energy. Loves a cigar. With yeah. The boys. I know where you're going there. <laughs> I mean, loves a cigar with the boys. Loves a great time, but this dude, I can I I can sit here and say this. I know I'm younger than him, but I'm gonna say it. I don't I don't give. A f- I am so proud of this dude and how he's developed as a player and how far he's come because a lot of people were writing him off for a long time, and I'm not trying to sh- throw shade at any type of you know the fans or anybody like that, but this dude was wrote off as a Raider. Um, people's you know lost belief in him. Um, didn't think he was going to be able to do what he's, you know, been able to do. And he's gone on to not only, you know, a couple different teams, but find real production, have real sack numbers, get a major extension from the Titans, get paid. Now he's able to, you know, take care of his kids, kids, and all while doing it with the most enthusiasm and crazy energy you can ever be around. And this dude is a baller. I love him to death. He's like a brother to me. Our number one rushman of the week is my boy, Arden Key, with six yeah. tackles, two sacks, and a forced fumble. I know oh. they had a tough loss. I know they had a tough loss. But this dude started the game, first one on Taylor Decker. <laughs> Burns mm-hmm. the edge, a little double swipe, gets home, and then ends up getting a strip sack as well. Um, but my boy Arden's been balling. Um, he's gotten better every single year. He can rush inside, outside. Um, he's a hell of a player and an asset to any team that he's that he's on. And uh, I'll say it again. I'm proud of you, Arden. You're my brother. 
Love you to death and keep balling, bro. You're our number one rushman of the week. Let's go, Art. Right, man. I thought you were going to say Derek Carr after all that intro for a second. The oh, boy? Do yeah. <laughs> Derek Carr is our rushman of the week. Yeah. Out of yes. <laughs> all right. Take us home. Let me Talk take you that home. Nation. Before I get a vase thrown at my skull because these dogs are outside right now hollering to the neighborhood. <laughs> um, but it's Halloween, so the neighbors can deal with it. Um, That's right. Anyway, about to go get them right now, so don't think I'm going to freak they're just outside for 10 minutes because trying to record the, the pod by the door yeah don't want any uh <laughs> people showing up in my house my dogs are more than healthy and happy but anyway i love you guys keep tuning in keep commenting keep subscribing i've seen the subscribers they went up a thousand in about a week we need you guys to keep subscribing keep tuning in keep liking keep reposting keep it's not twitter anymore but retweet or i don't know what do they call it repost Get on now X. Get on X and repost yeah, yeah. our story. We post our whole shit on on X. Yeah. Tune in. We got the we we. I mean, I go on and on about these guys, but these are my <laughs> brothers right here. We got the best people in the land doing what we Let's do. Go, baby. We're having fun with it. We love you guys. We appreciate it. Keep tuning in. It's only up from here. Negativity does not exist in our world. We're gonna keep thriving, keep inspiring, keep dominating on a daily basis. We love you guys. This is the rush. Peace. Walk up in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him.